We ask that you be with us in all we say, do, and think, oh Father God. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that any hindrance that would keep us from hearing the word from you, from worship and truth and spirit, that you would remove right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our pastor as he comes forth to break the bread of life, Father yes. God. Bless this choir as they sing songs as I yes. Bless this congregation. Father oh God, we thank you in advance for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, and all that you're doing. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. 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 We're going to have a musical selection. You may be seated from uh, the choir. Is it, come on, y'all, let's give the choir a hand. It's all these people. Yes, yes. We're going to have a selection from the choir, and then after that, we'll have our vocals.
those who knew us to Christ. Amen. To those in Amen. Amen. So good to be here on this first day, second day, first Sunday of June. They will be out, amen. They're traveling, amen. Amen. The others, I wait for them to bring me their excuse when I see them again, amen. This week or next Sunday, amen. But to God be the glory, we are excited about those who are here. The great thing is when you're not a person, you can still. Likely, amen. We usually had more watching than we do in person, and that's okay too. Although I'm a people person, amen, amen. An emphasis on person. I like you in person, amen. I like people in person, amen. So to God be the glory. Again, it's the first Sunday of July, amen. And so we just thank God, amen. It's a little gray here in New Jersey. But I thank God that I'm able to see the greatness, amen, and to feel the fresh air that we had this morning. Uh, let me say, are there any visitors among us this morning? Amen. Amen. Look like all, all, all good home folk. Let us take time. Let us just greet one another, amen, in Christian love.
Sister July, let Valerie, come on, my boy. For my sister May Moses, she will be on the third, and then I have a sister-in-law on the fourth, and some of the nieces and aunts and nephews. I'm standing in for my brother Sylvester here in July the twelfth. All right, July the twelfth for Sylvester. My son and niece July the ninth. Your son and niece July the ninth. July fourth. Amen. Amen. So let's go. Let's let's get it out. Amen. 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 Amen.
beginning of his retirement. Amen. Amen. And Tyler Moon was here yesterday, so he shared some personal stuff, and I'm going to take the liberty to share. He said he is the first one in his family that has been able to retire. Amen. So as he reflected and we reflected, it was very interesting to hear. A lot of times family members are called home before they even reach retirement. Yeah. Amen. 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 Or sometimes they work till they call home. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sound like me, right? We want to just work <laughs> till we call home. Bread too high, honey. I got to go to work. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Anybody else, though? Anybody else in a special day? Right. That you got engaged last night. Amen. 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 Is anybody else celebrating anything personal? You know, that they, you know, you know, maybe you got five years without a driving ticket. Is that you? <laughs> 27 years without a ticket. 27 years without a ticket. 27 years clean. 27 years clean. Amen. 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 Anybody else? That's all right. That's all right. To God be the glory. We're going to move on. Amen. So to God be the glory. It is now uh, time for us to worship God through our giving. Amen. The Bible says, when a man or woman rob God, and we like to say not here in humanity, remember now, we are still honoring our men's and women's day. We need the special envelope for the 150 assessment. We still have those. Amen. And your tithes and offering envelope. You can get one from the ushers in the back. I'm going to ask, um, it's so beautiful to have Sister Dorothy and Sister Susu uh, serving as our ushers this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on up, sister. And they, they they came to us real recently and they just they just jumped right in. Amen. 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 We will recruit you. This is a army that does recruit. You know, amen. Let us stand to our feet. Let us face the walls. Sister Washington, would you direct those back there to come around? Come on. Y'all follow Sister Washington, follow him around.
disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and interests of the heart. And therefore, and there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This completes the reading of the word. You may now have your seats. Amen. Amen. Uh, I ain't got much weight for this. I'm sorry if I'm going to do this last one. I'm going to move out of the line again, all right? Thank you. 
Personality is called a disassociative identity disorder, or they would use the acronym DID. People with this DID, they would say, have two or more distinct personalities. The thoughts, actions, and behaviors of each personality may be completely different. We call it a split personality, but it's actually not a personality disorder at all. It's the presence of two identities that continually have power over a person's behavior. Uh, you ever had a friend or family member, maybe you currently do, and you say, somehow they always come across a little different than the time before. It seems to be that they may be two persons in one. Mm. But let me say this, I'm not a psychiatrist or one who has studied medicine in this way, so I have no desire to diagnose anyone who struggles with this very real and perplexing disorder. But I know that we are all born with a split personality of sorts. Uh, this type of disorder can be found in a medical journal. Even though it has already been diagnosed and prescribed a cure. 
Yes, Think about it. We are all born with a sin nature. Yeah. We're born with a nature just to inherently do the wrong thing. Yeah. That's one identity we cannot escape. But we also have the capacity to do good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have the same opportunity to become what God desires for us to be. Still, it's a struggle. Listen to what Paul uh, said. The Apostle Paul said about his struggle, of this struggle within his own body. He said, when I want to do good, well, yeah. I don't. Yep, yep, yep. When I try not to do wrong, I do. You ever been there? How many can say when they want to do good sometimes, they just can't? Amen. Uh, others can say, you know what, even when I try not to do the wrong thing, I do. Yes, All right. Am I the only one like that? Oh. <laughs> one thing is certain. Good people do bad things. Yes, sir. So I, I, I want you to hold that for a minute, right? Because I don't want you to feel guilty. Listen, good people do bad things. And I put the emphasis on good people. Just because you've done something not so good or even wrong don't mean you're a bad person. Absolutely. Good Absolutely. people do bad things. Absolutely. James said the only way to avoid this is to submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Paul said something similar. He said he had to bring his body into subjection to the will of God. Listen to him. He said, I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I fight the wind. I'm not just shadow boxing or playing around. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. All right. And so and so and so both James and Paul, right, are moving with purpose, right? Right, by the Spirit of the Lord and with the Lord to do the right thing. It's clear from the testimony of James and Paul that we are all fighting a war between our carnal flesh and our spiritual nature. We all fight a war. Uh, some wars are more, you know, are, are more dangerous than others. Some are more detrimental than others. I fight a war every day. I fight a war every day to keep my sweet tooth down. All right? I like to have something sweet, but every time I go to the doctor, the blood works and stay away from the sweetness. Ah, I don't know if you go to the same doctor that I go to. Same thing. But listen. Outcome is determined by input. Yeah. Um, they had a saying to say, garbage in, garbage out. If you want your car to move, you fill it with gas. You wouldn't fill your tank with water except to get, uh, and expect to get anywhere. Likewise, if you want your life to head in the right direction, you need to feed it from the right source. Oh, right. The source for good. Not the source for evil. Church, our source for good is nothing but this word of God. Uh, as we struggle with our own split personalities, if we want to bring it under subjection, that, that bad part of the personality, it's all about staying with the word. Yes, sir. Uh, the word of God is a winning tool in the race and battle of life. They are two primary Greek words. One is logos and one is rhema, right? That aptly describe the word of God, especially in the New Testament. The word logos to the inspired word of God and to Jesus who is the living word. And the Greek word rhema refers to the spoken word. Yes. And I for a little while, I just want to look at what this writer and Hebrews uh, had to say at how the word of God can impact us, right? And help us to move closer to the personality that the word of God and Jesus Christ desires for us to be. Yeah. The first thing it says, and we're going to take this, it's real little, huh? It's so simple, right? That you're going to say, ah, I see, I see, I see. The first thing is the writer says the word is quick. Go back to your text, right? It's right there. It's right there at the top. He said, for the word of God is quick. Yeah. Ah, you can stop right there. See, quick doesn't mean fast. It means living. All right. All right. Acts 10 and 42 says that Christ is the judge between the quick and the dead. In other words, the living and the dead, Christ is the judge. Isn't that good news that Christ is our judge? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't it good news that 
cousin Kevin ain't your judge, that 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 that, that your boo ain't your judge, your supervisor ain't your judge, that your friends don't need to judge you. Isn't it good that Christ and only Christ is the judge? Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been judged by some friends, and I said, with a friend like that, I don't need my enemies to do any judging. Paul is saying that the word is alive, y'all. It is alive as God himself who uttered it. It is a living, a breathing bestseller, if I can put it that way. Filled with the character and the will of God. You can't read it without it impacting your life because it's alive with sound doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. You've heard it said that our constitution is a living and breathing document. By living and breathing, they mean that the constitution was written as a dynamic or flexible document. So it can be changed with the times. If there are mistakes in it, they can be corrected simply by redefining the role of government. And you have seen that as you have turned on the TV. They have redefined, yeah. new defined. Changed to define and did so much to find and recently that it really is a living document. Mm. But God's living document, huh? But God's living, breathing word is a little different. Huh? It has no need to be flexible because God never has and never will make any mistakes. His word was perfect in the beginning. And it is still perfect because God is perfect. Jesus warned us not to change a single word or definition of his father's living, breathing masterpiece. Jesus says it this way. He says, Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one till shall no wise pass from the law till it is filled, or I should say fulfilled. Yes. The words are jot and till were small marks added to Hebrew letters to change their emphasis and meanings. They were similar in appearance to our comma and our exclamation point, but with far greater impact. It sounds like Jesus is saying, don't you dare mess with any of my father's laws if you know what's good for you. Or maybe he's saying it this way, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. God's word is not just paper, and it. It's a living reality. The Bible bears witness to it itself by describing the living word uh, in this word. It says it's a shining land which illumines our path. Another verse says a growing seed planted in our hearts which bring us alive. Psalms 1 1 through 3 says it's a flowing river which waters its readers. His word remains the same, church, yesterday, today, and forevermore. And his living word will continue to breathe on us for all of eternity, as long as we ingest it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be more consistent about what you're doing in life, more consistent about who you are in life. Yeah. Make it time a point to get in to the Word. Amen. Amen. If I can do anything for any of our new believers and even the old ones, it would be right. stay in the Word. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Uh, Charles Swindoll said it this way. He says, news articles may inform us. Novels may inspire us. Yeah. Poetry may enrapture us, but only the living, active word of God can transform us. Uh, so if you want to see a change, if you want consistency in that good side of the personality, stay in the living word of God. Uh, but then next, stay right there, right here on that same line. The writer says the word is powerful. All right. Mm. This means that the word is operative and effective in its purpose. It's not dormant and inactive. No matter how long you leave it on your coffee table and let it collect dust, the word is God's energizing promise yes. that though a man or woman is dead, yet he or she can live again. Yes, I don't care what's going on in your life. I've seen the word of God transform many who were dead to Christ into living believing, effective Christians. 
when you read a novel by any, any other author, it's nothing more than entertainment. You don't run out and act like the characters in the book. But when you read God's novel, it touches your heart and compels you to be better and to do better. God's word becomes a part of you. Even if you reject what you read, it will still impact you because his word is a living power over you. Yes, sir. Yes, and it sir. has to be power over yeah. you. I've tried to read your word. I've tried to avoid certain scriptures that I knew were talking straight to me. I said, I need to read this one tonight. And it's talking to me. And I really want to be the other part of my personality. Yeah. I, I, I need to avoid this one. But because I already know this one, uh -huh. I, I have a tendency to then kind of back up on the pages and look at it anyway. And I'm here to tell you, the words on the pages are so powerful. And if you put them in not only your head but your heart, the impact of the word is so powerful that it will force you, huh? Yeah. It will force you to give a desperate man a drink of water. It will force you, it will force you to go right when you want to go wrong. It will force you to pray for your enemies. It'll force you to love those who ain't lovable. It'll force you to do what God would have you to do. God's word is so powerful that it can nourish the spirit of every believer with exactly what he, he or she needs to become and to remain a child of God. By its sheer power, the word turns believers into overcomers. I'm here to tell you, it has that type of power to turn believers into overcomers. Huh? The word of God in 2 Corinthians say what? We are troubled on every side, yet are not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yeah. The word of God has that type of power, sweetie, yeah. that it can change yeah. huh, that situation or really give you yeah. the strength to bear yeah. Yeah. that situation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Bad will come. Huh? Challenges will come. But the word of God will give you that inner strength, that inner fortitude. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? To live with it, to live through it, and to get through it. Ah, and that's all because of the power of the word. By the power of God's word, sinners become saints. By the power of God's words, dismal lives are transformed into victorious uh, disciples. By the power of God's word, uh, the word, like it says, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The power of this word is the key that unlocks a heart and heart. Uh, his word, I'm here to tell you, is a bed to rest on. His word is a sure foundation. His word is bread to the hungry. It's comfort to the lonely. It's hope to the hopeless. It's rest to the worried. Even though the winds of persecution have blown against it, the word still remains. Even though the waves of immortality have lashed out against it, the word still remains. Even though the sharp acts of the atheist voice have tried to hold it down. The word still remains. I'm here to tell you this word of God is not only quick, it's powerful. But then lastly, we're going to go to the table. It's right there in the book. You can write this sermon yourself. I don't know why I didn't call you last night. But it's, <laughs> this word of God is sharp. I can say sharp than a two edged sword. This means that the word cuts. Mm. Yes, sir. Come on, they go. Uh, yeah, it cuts. Yes, you ever sat someplace out? You ever watched TV? You ever been in here maybe? Just yes. maybe once? Mm -hmm. And you heard the word <laughs> God, And you felt like he was talking straight to you. Come on, bitch, man. Come on, bitch, man. Come on, bitch, man. Like they was had an eye on you last night. Come on, bitch, man. You felt like somebody followed you this past week. No. Yeah, you felt like somebody dipped into your inbox. Huh? No. Somebody was reading your messages. The word of God is sharp to any two edged sword. Means it'll cut you, honey. It can penetrate and cut out what needs to be eradicated with the precision of a masterful surgeon. Huh? So when I went to go have my surgery on my neck and my spine, huh, the guy said, uh, my doctor, huh, he said, I'm going to cut you. Part of what I'm going to cut you is in your neck. Yeah. Oh, and he scared me with that. I said, I don't nobody got cut in their neck than me. <laughs> so I'm going to cut you in your neck. He said, you're going to have a star on your neck for life. That's what he said to me. 
June. But Dr. Bronco, and I still oh, remember that tall Russian's name right now. Mm -hmm. The Lord put him in place just for me. Come on. Oh, yeah. But you know, after he operated on me, I had one conversation. Yeah. And the next time I went for my follow-up, he was gone. Oh, I said he was there just yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you just me. When Dr. Bronco cut me and he was finished with me, about a month later there was no scar. Oh, oh look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I'm talking about a surgeon who can cut you and you yes, won't even bleed. Yes, yes, and that's the masterfulness of the word of God. Oh, huh? It's so precise that it can separate the soul and the spirit from your very bone. Yeah. It can do it without causing a wound because Christ was already wounded for you. Uh, his scalp was wounded with 32 thorns. His back was scored with a bony whip. His hands and feet were wounded with nails. His side was wounded by a Roman spear. Paul says God's word can penetrate the marrow. Yeah. And that's the deepest part of your bone structure and detect every sin that eats at your spirit. Its cleansing power is unlike any other. With the utmost precision, the word can cleanse the from the word scalp. All right. All right. When I say nothing, I mean nothing. Not a greedy spirit, not a proud look, not a vulgar tongue, not a sinful nature, nothing high not a foolish decision, not a jealous stare, not an offensive remark, not even a dirty joke. Nothing hides from this word. Not a wicked imagination, not an impure thought or a filthy habit. I say absolutely nothing can hide from this word. Not a quick temper or a rebellious attitude, not even a hard heart. Maybe you're one of those people who thinks you are too far gone to be any good. I'm here to tell you, honey, you're wrong. Even though God's established law says you are guilty, it is the good news. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Uh, none of us are worse than the other. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty. Let me say it again. None of us, honey, are worse than the other. I don't care what you did for the past 50 years or year 51, if you accept Christ, Believe in this thing. Confess. You're no different than any other rest of us. I don't care how long we walk this race. Yes, sir. None of us yeah, right. are no worse no. than the next. No. 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 You walk out here feeling more guilty or guiltier yes, than your neighbor. Yes, uh, for all that sin and fallen short. Yes, yes sir. sir. If you think you are ugly from the inside out, I've got good news for you. Christ can make you beautiful. From the inside out. Sin may have made you greedy, but Christ can make you generous. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That bad thing you've done may have made you hateful, but Christ can make you love. Yeah. Huh? That crazy friend you used to run with may have made you corrupt, yeah. but Christ can make you pure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that thing you really, really, really to keep you in your selfishness, right? Has made you so selfish. I'm here to tell you, Christ can make you sacrificial. You'll find yourself giving up your last piece of goods to somebody else. Uh, whatever has got you fearful, yeah. if you get with this word, you'll find some sense of peacefulness. Mm -hmm. You can't avoid the word. It's quick and powerful yeah. and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God wants to take your split personality <laughs> and give you a single-minded purposeness. Yeah. And that is to accept Christ and reject everything yes. that personality B wants you to do wrong. Yes. Ah, there's no other source of help. There's no other way out of sin. There's no other method to get the job done. No other formula will work and no other remedy will be. Only Christ can put the song in your heart that you so desperately desire. A song that will let the world see you, not as a split personality, but as one who responds to the word of God. As one who trusts in the promises of God. As one who yields to the spirit of God. As one that is faithful to the house of God. And as one who has a relationship with the Son of God and fellowship with the saints of God. I'm here to tell you, if you get into this word, if you get into this word, 
there's no way you can come out the same. Let me tell you why I'm so thankful for his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus Christ is the living word of God, and it's the living word of God that saved a wretch like me. Yeah, it was nothing else but the word of God. You know, I tried coming to church Sunday after Sunday, sitting in a pew, and then running out there and go do my thing. But the more I sat in that pew, the more that word was preached to me, the more I read that word, the more the word changed me. All of a sudden, I couldn't come in there on Sunday and run out. I started coming in and hanging around. God is asking what I can do over here, what I can do over there. But then more importantly, when I got out there, I found myself shaking a brother's hand, picking a brother up, loving somebody that wasn't lovable, giving up money that I didn't even have. I found me to be a change and I'm here to tell you it all started with me giving in the word of God and I know it's tough that's why we got the Bible studies that's why we got many people around you may be new to this place and it's really tough this ain't an easy book to read but I'm glad now unlike when I first came to Christ there's so many different ways to read this thing there's so many different interpretations I'll lead you to one that can make it very plain Being among the saints, huh? Oh, yeah. you gotta yeah. change your circle. Once you change your circle, you'll do what the circle is doing. If the circle is praying on Tuesday, you'll pray on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. If the circle is studying on Thursday, you'll study on yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. If the circle wake up on Sunday morning and say, We're gonna pray and talk about how we work, you find yourself doing that. And before you know it, you ain't got time for that little person. <laughs> <laughs> To God's word. Yes. It's a living word. Yes. It's a powerful word. Yes. And it's a word that'll cut you to your soul. <laughs> to God be the glory. Take, but the way gets on the trace. 